Here it is. 36 inches of sheet metal bending glory. Made from a bunch of metal that I don't use anymore. All fabricated in my little metal workshop right here. We got the cantilever with the little fingers so you can lock stuff down. We got the uh, lifter upinator for the bender overinator. Oh yeah, this thing is glory. Strategically mounted with invisible bolts right now, but we'll get there. My first sheet metal break was this piece of garbage right here. This was three hours from in my head to in my truck. And I made this really just so I could make rocker panels for the V8 Pontiac Firefly. There's a link up there to see some of the videos we did on that car. This was okay. It did rocker panels all right. I added this to give it a bit more rigid rigidity. It's a pain to use because you got to loosen off these bolts on both ends, slide the sheet metal underneath, clamp the bolts down on both ends, and then you can pull this up and bend it. Um, I did have another bit of a truss here, but it kind of got in the way for sheet metal that had to come out the other side. This is really just too thin. I've also cut it out because I couldn't fit what I needed to fit in there. So this is a piece of garbage. It worked, but uh, it's just a piece of garbage. I used to do a project with my metalwork students that was a machinist device. It used three by three by half inch uh, angle iron and two and a half by half inch flat bar to make the vise. And the problem with it was it, the kids either made it absolutely perfect or it was absolutely wretched and there was no in between and no way to fix it. The kids didn't really like the project. None of them went home. Uh, very few of them worked, so I don't do the project anymore. Nevertheless, I have a whole bunch of three by three by half and two and a half by half that's just been sitting on a shelf. So I found a set of plans for doing a sheet metal break, but it, I didn't want to have to go buy a whole bunch of steel. I had all of this steel, so I went through, I'll leave a link in the description if I can find the link again, uh, but I went through the thing, drew it all up in Fusion 360, and just to make sure it would work and altered it all to fit the three by three angle and the two and a half inch flat bar that I had. With Fusion, you can print out just the shape, cut it out with a pair of scissors. Um, Smart Cookie would probably glue it down, but I figured I'd be sneaky. And then you can just center punch right on there. So it's computer designed, which really just means it's very accurately done wrong. There are a few errors, a few mistakes I made in the fabrication of this. So keep your eyes out and see if you can find all of the mistakes that I made on this. Leave a comment below and subscribe when you find the errors that I made in this design. With drilling, you want to start with a pilot hole, work your way up to the biggie size. I've got to set a pretty cheap Princess Auto um, Deming drill, I think they're called. They just half inch shank, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I ended up destroying two of my drills here because they just they just didn't like drilling. Could be my drill press doesn't go slow enough. Nevertheless, they're garbage. I got to get some new ones. My horizontal bandsaw um, broke the blade, which I TIG welded back together. It broke the switch, so I had to make a new switch. Uh, it broke oh a couple other things. This thing really tried to eat my project. Here is a boring bar that I made out of a one inch piece of steel. And I just drilled a hole and I've got a small lathe high speed steel bit in there for cutting holes bigger and bigger and bigger. Works pretty good, but I had to get it up to one inch um, with the Deming drill that I had. And cutting speeds are kind of like sumo wrestlers. The bigger they are, the slower they run. With a little bit of math, you can figure out how far that cutter needs to stick out to get the size that you need. Now we got the death table. You don't want to be really having your fingers near that. It'll, it'll, you can put a whole cow through that. But it's a super handy way of cutting steel because the blade goes nice and slow, just made for steel. You'd wreck your wood uh, vertical bandsaw if you're trying to cut steel with that. Don't ask the wood shop teacher how I know. And with some creative clamping, you can cut the corners down of things and just kind of get it closer and closer. I did try to plasma cut all this stuff with my plasma cutter at home. There's a link above to um, that wonderful plasma cutter, cheap dollar store, eBay special. 
I did try using the more expensive plasma cutter CNC controlled at school, but it just couldn't cut through half inch steel or the 5.8 steel that I think I wanted to cut stuff out of. Earlier you saw a big hunk of angle iron. I don't know where I got that angle iron from. I've had it for years. But it, I figured it would make some nice sides and also have built-in flanges in there. You'll see it pop up in here again soon. These are the cantilever um, thingies, links, I guess. Uh, notice I'm rolling up my sleeves. Never use gloves when you're using machinery. I always use gloves when I use machinery. Never use gloves when using machinery. It might get caught in a machine and take your hand with it. I have lost lots of skin, so I wear dead cow because I'd rather use their skin than lose my skin. Here's that crazy angle iron stuff. I got two pieces uh, stuck together, Siamese, welded on the ends to hold it together, and I'm using the horizontal bandsaw to slice parts of it away. And then uh, that was just a pain to use the death table to try and cut that, so I ended up just using the uh, cutting disc on my angle grinders and that actually worked really really slick if you're patient and you don't cut through your fingers until your angle grinder grenades it's a pretty good way to go one angle grinder down this is getting to be an expensive project but it works pretty good and it just pops it all apart and then you can break all the pieces out mill it cut it file it whatever you need to do to make it work more cutting I have four angle, no, I, well now I have three angle grinders. I don't like changing the discs for everything, so I just have a grinder for cutting, and a grinder for sanding, and a grinder for wire wheeling, and a grinder for grinding, although I have to pick one up once they go on sale. So, anyways, this one I think I switch, switched to a Bosch, relatively cheap, I think it's a six amp jobby, but it, it did pretty good. The one that burnt to the ground was a Canadian tire jobby. I used to have a bunch of those, but I've wrecked 50% uh, of the ones that I had. This was just cleaning stuff up, using the milling machine, try to get a nice flat surface. Uh, you want to measure correctly between the center of where that hole got drilled and the top of that flat. I'm just using a ball nose to smooth out the transition from the horizontal up the angle side. Some Sharpie on there. This drilling was scary as heck. Don't do that. And then uh, if you're smart, you'd put it in a vise so that all of your effort can go into work instead of half your work effort into holding it. Uh, this part you really want to make sure you're very very precise in how you're laying things out and where you're drilling the holes because this will come to bite you a little bit later on. Accuracy is going to your, be your biggest friend here. And sharp drill bits. Um, I usually tell kids to cut like half a turn and then back off with uh, with a tap and die set, but when you get to smaller and smaller taps, I'm a whole lot gentler than that. I keep the two welded together while I cut it and grind it and drill it just so that it, everything lines up in there as perfectly symmetrical as can be. And the cutting disc sure makes short work of getting the shape I want. It works really well. I suppose you could probably do this all in the milling machine. I'm not really that talented with the milling machine. But, you know, it's a tool. It's not my master's thesis. It's not a uh, mechanical heart valve. It's just a tool for folding sheet metal. It will be okay. Plus, it's all going to get scratched up anyways. I needed to have some kind of eccentric adjusters, so I, I, I don't have an in indexing head or anything or a dividing head, so I just set this up, cut a slot, and then um, I've got a digital angle indicator, angle finder thing, and I would just turn it 60 degrees, make another flat, turn it 60 degrees, make another flat, until I got a hex. I did the hex a little ways inboard so I can cut it right through the middle of the hex and then have two uh, hex ended threaded adjusters uh, and they would be, the hexes should match. Just took it to the wire wheel to take off any sharp little bitties. Here I am cutting her in half and then cutting her off, and then we're going to face them, cut the shoulder down to the right size, and then we need to drill an eccentric hole in it. That's always pretty exciting right there, let me tell you. Working with a lathe is soothing. I think everybody should get a lathe. Lathes would probably just reduce the amount of conflict in the world today if you just spend some time cutting stuff smaller on a lathe. Oh, man. This is, I think, one of the eccentrics. Um, or the threaded eccentric adjusters. Yeah, it looks like it. 
making sure it fits. My particular lathe is supposed to be both metric and imperial, but the increments on the crossfeed, each single line of the crossfeed is 0 0.004 of an inch, which makes it a little harder to do the math because I don't count by fours all that well. Um, but, you know, I'm getting used to the lathe and getting it pretty close to accurate. You can see the chunk of steel I put on one side of the hex there to offset it. And it, it might not be exactly that, but if you put in an eighth inch piece of steel, or in this case, I think it's a 3 16 piece, uh, it offsets the hole about that much. It may not be exactly that, but it sure seemed to work pretty good for me. It doesn't really matter what the offset has to be, but as long as you get some offset happening. This is slicing out notches, I think. Yeah, probably for the bottom of the, the brake. You could put this in a milling machine and cut away, but I just the cutoff wheel was just working so well. It just, it does nice straight cuts. Whereas with a milling cutter, I'd have to clamp it a bunch of different ways to try and make the cutter do the shape that I want without having a rounded corner in there. And uh, my mill is only a six by 26. And that's, it's, it's just not big enough. Could be done, but in the time it took me to think about it, it was already done with the cutoff wheel. Yeah, that's just pre-drilling the hole with the tap drill, then chase the hole with the the thread size, then use that hole to make sure the tap goes perfectly straight. I did find that the threaded hole above the big one inch or three quarter, yeah, it's a one inch hole down there, um, that kind of got in the way, but I ended up using the bolt to help hold a sleeve in place. And you'll see that when we get into the assembly. These are going to be the large end of the eccentric. They hold the clamp handles using the tailstock to try and get it the sitting true so I can face it and turn it down and then just turn it down until it fits. Uh, I think for most of these I had about a four thousandths clearance for most of the moving parts. I was having some alignment issues with some uh, inaccuracies in the way I drilled things uh, and in chasing it I loosened up some of the clearances but it works fine and actually being a little sloppy it works pretty good. Again, with the big drill bits, these drill bits were, they're not happy with metal, let's be honest. This will be one of the sleeves for the eccentric bar that goes through the whole width of the whole bottom. I'm using carbide cutters. I used to have a fancy quick change turret on the lathes at school, but and I would use carbide cutters, but the kids wouldn't notice that they shattered the carbide cutter and then were trying to machine their projects with the cutter holder with no cutter on it at all. So at school I've gone back to high speed steel and I can sharpen them super quick and I don't go anywhere near as many cutters as when we did carbide. At home I use carbide cutters because man I can turn the speed up and cut really well. I really enjoy it. But for school it's fine. These are the handles for the eccentric face the ends. I think I rounded them just hogging it down with the file. Here we are with the brackets again. Uh, I discovered that the eccentric kind of hit these because my original plans don't include angle iron. They were drawn with something else. So uh, I just sliced them open with the chop saw, cut off saw, and uh, smoothed them up with the mill. And then I used the mill to cut a little slot for the three quarter inch pivot to go. I needed to have some space in the base. And then it's all in your face. Um, and then we're on the milling machine, cutting a nice groove, because I figured it would be nice and tidy to do that. It did leave a little bit of a rounded corner in there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Reassemble the whole thing, add in the little rings that kind of act as a bushing that this stuff is getting heavy now holy smokes i don't know if i'm going to be able to lift this when it's all completed but we lock her all down put in the eccentrics 3 8 bolt slide the bar all the way through and you can see why i had to cut a notch in the base plates there those eccentrics were just a little bit too low i didn't plan in my plans in using angle iron i just kind of thought of the angle iron after i drew up the drawings so anyways mig weld it all together just using my Lincoln 140. If you like the welding cart, there's a link up above on how to build a welding cart. Oh, yeah. 
Anyways, once it's all tacked in place and you know what's going to fit, you crank the welder up to 11 and just burn it all in. I also ended up adding a bit of weld on the back side because I was a little not totally comfortable with only being welded on one side. If I'm putting a lot of leverage on this, I need a little bit more weld. So I welded it pretty thoroughly, then I just took it over to the vise and gave her. Everybody should weld. There'll be less world problems if everybody had a welder. Discovered, yeah, this thing isn't opening all the way up. And that's when we took her out. Welded the other side a whole lot more aggressively and then cleaned up some of the overhanging weld with my favorite tool, the angle grinder with a cutting disc. If you find yourself on the floor doing the funky chicken because of all the welding flash, leave a comment below and subscribe telling me all about it. So I'm trimming up a bunch of the little kind of boogered bits of weld on there just to make it nice and clean and make sure nothing's going to hang up. And then I'm just cutting a slot out of the base again because, I mean, I can put this on the milling machine, but to get the shape that I wanted, I'd need to have this thing on end, and I don't think my mill can do it. My mill is only a 6 by 26 It's not that big. This part's kind of cool. We're drilling a hole through the circumference of the bolts. Then I can thread it, and a bolt is going to go through there, lock them together. It can still be disassembled. It's easier to do this if you weld it together and then it all slides through like this. Then the handles become part of the bolts to hold the whole thing together so you can still take it apart, but it is assembled and fixed, which is kind of cool. I milled some slots or flats onto the sides of the handle so they would stay nice and secured onto the eccentrics. 5 16 bolts in here, rattle it on in, and it's loose and sloppy enough that everything moves gorgeous. And then uh, got the eccentric up at the top as well. Again with a 3 8 bolt. I think I welded a nut on the back side just to make it a bit easier. I'm using soluble oil to cool everything while I'm cutting. It makes the cutter last a little bit longer. gives you maybe a little bit better cut. Um, and theoretically all the water evaporates and then just leaves oil behind. Here's another one of those fantastic adventures of make the marks, center punch it, drill all the way through everything. Then we'll take that bar off. I took it over to the drill press drilled the holes quarter inch so that I can line up the uh, quarter inch tap through the quarter inch holes and then thread themselves into the 3 16 uh, holes I drilled previously. I think it's 3 16 or 13 64 I don't remember. Check a tap and drill chart. I got a video link above to show you how to cut threads using a tap and drill chart. Subscribe and leave a comment if you already know how to drill Leave two comments if you know how to drill and tap. Delete both comments if all you know how to do is tap. Sometimes when I make stuff, uh, there's careful calculations and I make sure that it's going to be reasonably engineered and reasonably strong. In this case, I'm just going at eh, what looks nice. I split it in the middle and then went half again as that, so I would end up with like five bolts holding this on. It doesn't really hold a lot of force or strength, so it's probably going to be fine. Checking the tap drill for the correct drill size for a quarter by 20 thread. Took the bar off, drilled the holes quarter inch so the threads don't bite into that puppy. And then we start tapping a couple holes again. Oh yeah, I got pretty good at this. In fact, later on, I don't show it on your video, I broke a 5 16 tap off in this project. Oh man, I was choked. When you break a tap off, you're kind of screwed. But I welded a bit with a TIG, built up the weld, then welded a nut to it, and I was able to remove it. Woohoo! And I ran out and bought a lottery ticket. This is just a quick jig for drilling the holes for all the fingers and making sure they're all nicely equally spaced. I know a few students who are equally spaced. But moving on! These are going to be the finger locker downinators that go on the back side, just made out of 3 16 angle. Again, with my favorite, they call this the death wheel, but you know, keep a guard on these. Don't take the guard off. That's just dumb. Guards are there for a reason, kind of like seat belts. Windshields don't hold you in all that well. But there we are. Got a couple of those. Took it again, set up a C clamp as a little bit of a stop so I could just put one in, drill a hole, take it out, put in the next one, drill a hole, take it out. And then if you're ambidextrous or polydextrous or anthropomorphic, if you're feeling polysyllabic, you should leave a comment. But drilling the hole out for the 5 16 
uh, set up the tap, bunch of oil in there. You should use a high sulfur oil like Sulflow or something, but any oil's better than no oil. And in this case, I think in that little pump is just uh, 30 weight non-detergent oil. It works, it'll still give you a nice finish, and you're less likely to break the tap off. That's the tap I broke off. It's nice seeing it again. It's like watching videos of a relative who passed away before you were born. You kind of miss them. You can get powered taps, like you can put them in a drill or something, use a machine to power them through. I'd like to get some of those, but I'm a little nervous about breaking those off. These are the main handles for the bending bar. I machined flats on either side of them and then drilled some holes, I think 5 16 um, just using a two flute end mill. Uh, and I can't remember the spacing. It's kind of sort of what looked right. And we just got the milled off. I used a little spacer, kind of eyeballed where it should be. And then I used the center bit from the lathe to start where the hole has to go. Then cut the threads. Oh yeah, it was the other side of this that I broke the threads off. Oh man, regret. Anyways, got to make it square. Clamp that puppy down, center bit, and then I used an eighth inch bit, and then I used a three sixteenths bit, and then I think it's an F drill for a five sixteenths, can't remember. Cut the threads, rattle her on in, and there you go. A cantilever system to lock itself down. You can adjust this, this is on an eccentric, so you can adjust the thickness of material you have to clamp. You have an eccentric on here to move the fingers back or forward. 16 gauge steel. Lift, place, clamp, it's in there. Bendity bend, bend, without even thinking. Ooh -wee. And then wash the whole thing down in lacquer thinner and I'm painting it with Tremclad. Tremclad's a Canadian equivalent of Rust-Oleum. This is a flat gray, it's just a color that I seem to really kind of like. So, painting the whole thing, it's not too much magic here. I'm not even really worrying about a perfect finish. It's a tool, all the paint's going to come off anyways. So, trying to get a nice style, flat gray and flat black, and uh, yeah, hosing her all down. I'm using Princess Auto flat black, because it's what I had. I didn't have any trim clad for that. It'll work. Got a, all the handles and all the bars and all that stuff together. Boom. Challenging part is doing the fingers. Uh, probably should have put them on a thicker piece of bar. Got them all painted black. They get scratched up pretty quick at work. I can imagine it being the same. Then. When all that's done, let it cure for a day, we can start assembling the whole thing. I don't even have a shop coat on, oh my gosh. So lining her all up, placing all the pieces in there, trying to remember which bolt in that big pile of bolts is the bolt that I need to bolt the bolts with, and rattle her on together. We got the cantilever bars, we got the top thing, we got the lever thing, we got all them things, and then uh, the eccentrics for the top part, and then once that is in, we can set up the eccentrics to clamp it, the adjustment for the eccentrics, I guess, and uh, then it's like finger time. I love that impact. That Milwaukee impact was a wonderful choice. Never thought what I'd use it for until I used it. Now I use it for everything. Oh my gosh. Housework, shop work, mechanic work, dental work, doesn't matter. That impact is fantastic. Anyways, add them all along. I even took one of the fingers and sliced it thinner, so I got that. There it is. Good times had by all. As always, thanks for watching.